For the Orthodox Zoroastrian community, Bombay is a city of rituals. High liturgies are performed daily within the most sacred precincts of fire temples. Other ceremonies, often held for community occasions, take place in public assembly halls or in any other appropriate place outside the temple. Presented here are an inner temple ceremony, the yasna, a liturgy of worship, and an outer ritual, the afrinagon, a ceremony of blessings. Shatrim chau di aim drigu vyo dadad vas dadim yatau Bait yo atara tu da shat si da jamang yo nas da Omningo shat da namang yo nas da aim Shatrim chau di aim drigu vyo dadad vas dadim Yes dim javam him jo bere dim javush da bere dim javan da bere dim javan Zoroastrians worship the Lord of Wisdom, Ahura Mazda. Ahura Mazda dwells in the spiritual world of light. He is opposed by the dark forces of evil. Ahura Mazda created the material world, which is the arena for the struggle against evil. Worship is one weapon in this struggle. Zoroastrian rituals fuse the powers of good and concentrate them in material objects. This yasna ceremony was recorded as a teaching demonstration. The actual yasna liturgy is performed only in Zoroastrian fire temples, which are not accessible to non-Zoroastrians. Dr. Feroz Kotwal, a Zoroastrian high priest from Bombay, India, acts as chief priest in this demonstration. Before the ceremony, we asked Dr. Kotwal what the performance of a ceremony means for a priest. He is dressed in the shawl of his office. Now, there are priests and priests. So, I cannot tell about all priests in general. But personally, I feel something elevated. First of all, a good priest always thinks that he has the required ritual power that he has received through the performance of ceremony. Again, he is in the presence of divine powers. As soon as we perform the ceremony, in the very first chapter, we invite and dedicate ourselves and all offerings to Auramazda, to archangels, angels, and all Firashtas all divine spirits. So we feel a divine presence within the ritual precinct in which we perform the ceremony. And when we do that conscientiously, God's blessings are always there. And when you see two priests, you can immediately distinguish from their very face that this priest is a lustrous priest. He has got glory on his face. And that means that he's performing all ceremonies so well, he's acting in accordance with the tenets of Zoroastrianism. And the other priest who is a hypocrite. So you can find from the face of the priest himself. The yasna is celebrated in a fixed enclosure called a place of purity. It is marked by furrows or channels built into the floor. Priests stay within the fixed enclosure during the ceremony. Zoroastrians are allowed to observe from outside the furrows. The ritual area is oriented toward the south and contains three low stone tables. On the southernmost table is the fire. Fire is of central importance to the ritual. The fire is kept alive throughout the ceremony. The assistant priest, whose principal duty is to maintain the fire, feeds wood to the fire using a ladle. 
At certain points in the yasna, the assistant priest also offers the fire a special combination of frankincense and sandalwood. At the other end of the ritual area is a stone platform. The chief priest will sit or stand on the platform during the liturgy. In front of the platform is the ritual table on which are purified utensils. On the east side of the ritual table are two crescent-shaped metal stands. Their shape suggests the crescent moon or it suggests the horns of a bull. The bull is an animal of importance in Zoroastrianism. Laid across the top of the stands is a bundle of 21 wires called barsom. The barsom wires are held together by a date palm leaf woven into a cord. The cord is kept freshly moistened throughout the ceremony. Next to the stands is a metal saucer containing fresh goat's milk. The milk will be mixed with other ingredients to make a drink called home. Wheat bread with clarified butter is placed next to the ritual table. Other utensils on the ritual table are a mortar in which twigs are crushed to make the home drink, a shallow bowl next to the mortar containing three home twigs and a pomegranate twig, and three metal cups, one containing a home drink consecrated in a preliminary ritual. Beside the ritual table stands a large metal basin of water. Water and sacred speech are the chief agents of purification. A pestle and strainer are submerged in the water. The strainer is used as a sieve for filtering the consecrated home drink. The metal container next to the basin is used throughout the ritual for pouring water to cleanse and purify the hands. The yasna is a daily service performed in the morning. A Zoroastrian layperson will pay the priest to perform a service. The yasna begins when the chief priest dressed in white garments pulls the mouth veil over his face. The veil prevents any saliva from touching the ritual objects. He recites the opening invocation in the sacred language of Avesta. The phrase means, for the pleasure of Ahura Mazda, righteousness is good. The power of these words does not lie in their meaning, but in the voicing of the sacred sounds. Such sacred speech is called mantra in the Zoroastrian tradition. Purity is achieved by the uttering of Avestan mantric sounds and the gestures of washing. The material world must be made ritually pure to accomplish the purpose of the yasna. The purpose is to bring about the holy presence of spiritual powers in this world. With the spiritual powers present, offerings can be made and blessings received. Both priests have entered the ritual area said the opening mantra, and made offering to the consecrated fire. The gesture of washing is always necessary before approaching sacred objects. The chief priest recites a prayer of dedication to the fire. A consecrated fire is a spark of the infinite, an embodiment of righteousness, manifesting the divine light of the spiritual world, which makes life possible and maintains order. The fire table must be purified and consecrated on all sides, even the north, the direction of evil. Three prayers are repeated often in the ceremony. They praise Ahura Mazda, righteousness, and the beings worthy of worship. They are the most sacred prayers in the tradition. 
The recitation is not all in Avestan mantra. These parts in another language are spoken in undertone out of respect for the divine Avestan utterances. <laughs> The ceremony is dedicated to a specific spiritual power and for the sake of a person, either living or dead. This dedication is said in undertone. <coughs> Putting their toes and knees together in an attitude of humility and respect, the priest recite, I praise well-thought, well-spoken, and well-done thoughts, words, and deeds. I embrace all good thoughts, good words, and good deeds. I reject all evil thoughts, evil words, and evil deeds. For the first time, the priest touches the barsom wires and recites the Zoroastrian Confession of Faith. I profess myself a Mazda worshiper, a follower of Zoroaster, opposed to the demonic, and a follower of the Lord's teaching. I ascribe all things good to the Lord of Wisdom. The priest and his assistant then exchange declarations. The exchange declares that the will of the Lord be done. The date palm cord around the bar psalm is moistened as the priest begins the recitation of the chapters of the Yasna text. The Yasna has 72 chapters. Originally, the bar psalm wires were twigs. The bar psalm wires and date palm cord represent the power of the plant kingdom, constantly enlivened by water. The two stands must be spiritually connected. The priest does this by the gesture of touching. The barsom seems to serve as a complement to the fire, as a second conduit between the material and spiritual worlds. For this reason, the priest maintains contact with the barsom throughout the ceremony. In this way, the priest draws power necessary to approach Ahura Mazda and to invite the presence of spiritual powers. Now begins the consecration and tasting of the wheat bread and the butter. The bread represents the plant kingdom and the butter represents the animal kingdom. The priest cannot touch his lips. That would be polluting, so he must raise his veil and throw a small piece of bread into his mouth. If the priest misses the throw three times, the yasna is destroyed. The gesture of tasting seems to represent the acceptance of an offering by the spiritual powers. The remainder of the bread will be given to those who commissioned the yasna. This act of tasting must take place in silence, encircled with sacred prayers before and after. The next gesture is the drinking of the home. Before the priest can drink the home, it must be symbolically offered to the fire.
By making contact with the Barsom, he makes a second symbolic offering of the home. Home is an exhilarating drink, a powerful stimulant associated with health and immortality. The priest praises the home, saying, Thereupon spoke Zoroaster, Praise to home. Good is home and well endowed, exact and righteous in its nature, inherently good and healing, beautiful of form and good indeed. When the priest drinks the home, he looks directly at the assistant priest. The visual contact between them fuses the powers of the mantras and the power of the home. The drinking of the home concludes with the purification of the cup and the ritual table. The table is cleansed in four places, including the place where the empty cup will be placed. Tying knots to make a loop is done while the priest dedicates himself to good actions and to the rejection of evil actions. The looping of the date palm cord over the horn of the stand further strengthens the contact between the barsom and its stand. What you will now see highlights a sequence of ritual gestures that take place during the recitation of 21 chapters. New home Jews will be prepared during this sequence. The power of the milk seems to be activated by the initial pouring of some of it between the saucer and the cup. The moistening with milk that begins here adds the power of the animal kingdom to the bar zone. <laughs> Before using the mortar, the priest submerges it in water. It will be enveloped by the water's power to cleanse and create. When the priest puts his feet together, a posture of supplication, he asks that Ahura Mazda grant prosperity and immortality to those who know righteousness. The saucer containing home and pomegranate twigs, together with the milk cup, are placed in contact with the bar zone. This contacting gesture organically relates the powers of the home, milk, and bar zone. Through the Barsom, the milk and home are offered to the spiritual world. Praises to home are recited throughout. <laughs> By placing the mortar on the table, the priest now prepares for the actual pounding of the home. Expressing reverence for each element, the priest places three home twigs, milk, a pomegranate twig, and water into the mortar. The sieve will be used in filtering the home juice. The visual contact and the verbal exchange between the priests strengthens the ritual moment. Down. 
gestures of sound alert us to the impending pounding of the home. The ringing is a sound of victory over evil. <coughs> the pounding gestures of striking also smite the forces of evil with ritual blows. The crushing of home twigs and the recitation of mantras releases the filtered essence of this life-giving home while smiting wickedness, disease, want, and death. The blessings encircle the world. Following the cue provided by the recited mantra, the priest offers the filtered residue to the barsom, milk, water, and table. Filtering ensures that the spiritual essence of the liquids is joined together as an offering and source of blessing. Squeezing ensures that all of the essence is released. At the conclusion of this first pressing, the home is put in contact with the barsom. A portion is offered to the barsom. There now follows a second pressing of the home. This occurs during the recitation of the first hymn of Zoroaster. The five hymns of Zoroaster have especially strong consecrating power. At the conclusion of the second pressing of the home, the mortar is inverted and the home is symbolically offered to the fire. The inverted mortar elevates the home and the milk saucer protects it with a cover. The priest recites, O Mazda, proclaim to me the best things, both divine words and deeds. These indeed proclaim through good mind and righteousness. Bring to reality a progressive world according to your will. Now the priest will recite 23 chapters, including the remaining hymns of Zoroaster, with no major ritual activity. The yasna takes about two and a half hours to perform. About an hour and a half of that is mantric recitation without major gestures.
Untying the knots that make the loop marks the end of the activity of consecrating the home. The final part of the yasna recapitulates the main elements of the ritual and allows the ritual's power to pass into the whole creation. The home has been uncovered to present it as an offering, and the priest has risen with barsom in hand. The priest prays the fire. I bless thee, O fire, with worship and praise as a good, happy, and loving offering. This wish is proclaimed by a devoted one. May you burn in his house forever. After the litany to fire, the priest prepares to mix all the liquids for the final offering. The mixing of the liquids activates them. This seems to stimulate the creative powers they contain. The priest turns to face the basin of water. The waters in the basin represent all the waters of creation. The priest recite, This do I beseech of you, O waters, lands, and plants, Grant prosperity and offspring who will become benefactors of the world, I beseech of you. As the liquids are mixed, the offering achieves its greatest potency. The priest recites, This libation containing home, milk, and pomegranate is offered with righteousness to thee, waters. May thou hear our yasna, O Ahura Mazda. May thou be pleased with our yasna. May thou sit near our yasna and approach us. The priests offer the mixture to the three good directions. The assistant priest cleanses his hand to be ready to receive the barsom. The priest secures the powers of the barsom and binds the powers of evil by tying as many knots as he can. <coughs> Both priests praise the three most sacred mantras the three holiest prayers that have sustained the ceremony. The priests join in a ritual handshake and begin the last act of the yasna. The priest will take the sacred hoe mixture out of the ritual area to a well containing fresh water. Some of the mixture will be poured into the well. 
the assistant priest will go on ahead and make sure that the way is clear for the chief priest. The chief priest will leave some home mixture behind should the purity of the sacred home be violated on the way to the well. When the chief priest pours the home into the well, he will praise the health-giving waters, the good plant kingdom, and the heavenly bodies. He asks that through this yasna, there may be an increase of benefit for the whole creation. Snow draw rain as thou a shame, well, who may stay must sing, or star, sing, or star, sing, or star, yet the shine, where you stay, a shame. Snow draw rain as thou a shame, well, who may stay must sing, or star, sing, or star, my yet the For the Zoroastrian, the world includes not only what is visible, but also realms of invisible spiritual powers. The source of both worlds is the Lord of Wisdom, Ahura Mazda. Zoroastrian rituals celebrate and maintain the connections between the two worlds by uniting right-minded humans with good spirit beings in the cosmic struggle against evil. The Afrinagon ritual is a ceremony of offerings to the Lord of Wisdom and His Spirit Creation, which invites their blessings on particular individuals, departed or living, and on the community as a whole. Unlike rites restricted to the Fire Temple, the Afrinagon may be celebrated at any appropriate place where Zoroastrians meet. The ritual is a celebration of abundance. Its purpose is to invite the spiritual beings into this world and offer them the essence of the consecrated food. They in turn bestow blessings of prosperity and well-being. At heart, the ritual is an uninterrupted series of chanted recitations in the sacred language of Avestan. Like all Zoroastrian rites, the ceremony takes place in the presence of the fire, which is a living embodiment of the principle of righteousness. The dramatic focus of the ceremony is an exchange of flowers between the two priests. This exchange is richly symbolic, expressing right communication, cooperation, the soul's journey between two worlds, and more. 
Thus, in many ways, the ritual establishes connectedness among all the creatures of the good creation. This Afrinagon, dedicated to Ahura Mazda, was recorded in Bombay, India, under studio conditions. Prior to the celebration, the two priests must ritually cleanse themselves by washing their hands and faces while reciting in Avestan for the pleasure of Ahura Mazda. Righteousness is good. The priests, wearing cotton garments, untie and retie the sacred cords worn around their waists. Shaking the cords toward the north expels the evil one. The priests chant, Be gone, Druge. You shall not destroy the material world of righteousness. The priests put on ceremonial vestments, a white turban and veil. and organdy robes. White symbolizes the ritual purity required to effect a closer connection between the visible and invisible realms. The ritual setting for the Afrinagon is a white cloth placed over a rug. The chief priest usually faces east. His assistant sits across from him. Between them is a fire vase which is fed with sweet-scented wood. There is a bowl of cooked sweet meat. Next to it, frankincense. In front of the priest, there is the chief consecrating tray containing a beaker of water, milk, wine, sweet lime juice, and a whole host of fruits. There is another tray full of flowers and additional fruits and flowers. There are tongs and a ladle. The ceremony begins with the priests lowering their masks. This prevents pollution from their mouths falling upon the ritual area. The assistant priest lights the fire and maintains it throughout the ceremony. The fire is the central feature of Zoroastrian worship. Its light connotes wisdom, its essence the vitality of life itself. Reverence is shown to the fire by offering it sandalwood and frankincense. There is as well an offering of sacred speech a litany of praise in Avestan. The fire is addressed as the son of Ahura Mazda, worthy of praise and adoration. The fire looks to the hand of all who approach, and being honored, bestows many blessings of a long, healthy, and elevated life. A prayer of praise to the names of Ahura Mazda is offered in Pazand, a secondary ritual language. The chant is a summary of the main Zoroastrian doctrines. This section concludes with a ritual hand clasp, during which the priests utter a Pazand prayer, which means, may you be united in strength and righteousness. It is said in an undertone, out of reverence for the sacred Avestan language. The chief priest arranges eight flowers, soon to be consecrated. Mm 
A preface in Pazond opens with a line, with good thoughts, words, and deeds, may this dedication reach the righteous guardian spirits. The commission ceremony is dedicated to a spirit being and honors members of the community, living or dead. The priest offers frankincense to the fire while he remembers the names of the departed, the Zoroaster, and the guardian spirits. Both priests conclude with, may the ceremony be successful. The priests now recite ten times the most sacred prayer in the Avestan language, the Ahunavar, which encapsulates the whole of the Zoroastrian teaching. An antiphonal recitation praises the Ahunavar. The chant, Ashim Vohu, declares that righteousness is good and is uttered as the sandalwood is offered to the fire, itself a spark of the infinite. The chief priest chants reverence to the radiant and glorious Lord of Wisdom. Followed by a benediction to the ruler of the land. At the pivotal moment of the exchange of roses, the priests proclaim, thus may it be so, I bless. The chief priest intones good thoughts, good words, good deeds. The flowers are instrumental on many levels. Not only are they symbols of good thoughts, words, and deeds, they exemplify the principle of life and represent the soul's journey after death. They express our connection with the whole of life, visible and invisible, and afford a vision of right communication. Speaking in an undertone, the priest prays the guardian spirits of the righteous. Reciting the Ahunavar, the chief priest touches the ladle to the water vase in the four cardinal directions. These connecting gestures express the wish that the glory and greatness of wisdom spread to all corners of the globe. Affirming Ashim Vohu, righteousness is good. The priest touches the ladle to the vase at the midpoints of the four directions. Having been consecrated, the flowers are returned to the chief priest as they chant the Ahunavar and Ashem Vohu. These concluding invocations, similar to those at the beginning of the flower exchange, encircle the ritual acts in sacred speech. With the ritual hand clasp, the priests say in undertone, may you be united in strength and righteousness. In full voice, they proclaim, thus may it be so, I bless, and affirm good thoughts, words, and deeds. This concludes the first of three flower exchanges. Portions of the remaining two will be shown without comment to call attention to the visual impact of this ritual sequence. Yes, 
The Avestan recitations accompanying each of the three flower exchanges have been dedicated respectively to Ahura Mazda, to co-workers of the highest spirit powers, and to Shrosh, the divine vehicle of insight. The chief priest now chants in full voice the concluding benedictions. He seeks the protection and blessings of the holy guardian spirits, the honored persons of ancient times, and the highest spirit powers. Both priests recite a closing benediction praising those attending the ceremony, which in part says, For every step taken by you, may the resplendent house of song come forward 1,200 steps to meet you. May you be righteous, and may you live long. Thereafter, they recite the final invocations which frame the entire ceremony. 21 Ahunavars, 12 Ashim Vohus, and a fourfold unit of prayers seeking the blessings of Ahura Mazda. Snow throw rain as thou, a shame of whom I stay, must aim, stars, team, stow, my yet a shame, they stay, a shame. Snow throw rain as thou, a shame of whom I stay, must sing, or stow, sing, or stow, my yet a shame, they stay, a shame. 